Okay, welcome back to Sikistan. So yesterday we put up a little clip from a live stream. So we just clipped some of those because there's some great questions. Those and not everyone's going to watch the full live stream and see things that are relevant to them. So we like to yeah, clip them, share them out the place, get some good videos going. One someone asked as basically every live stream we do. Someone asked about squat every day and is it basically the best way to get better at squatting? And our answer was no. So we didn't put a lot of. We, we gave a fairly conclusive answer to that, I think, but we've done it a few times before. Um, but for some reason yesterday, the video grew a lot of legs and a lot of, uh, there's 135 comments on the video in less than 20 hours or something. So a lot of good questions, right? And there's a lot more, we could have expanded on a lot more yeah, yesterday. There's a definitely. lot of, we could have done a lot more yesterday, but we, while we're, when we were on the live stream, you know, we get to the prompt point and if someone expands more. So we're just going to run through some of the comments yesterday because there's some good questions on why things don't work. There's a few people who do that thing on YouTube where, and it annoys fits a lot, and it annoys me a lot too, I'm not going to lie, where <laughs> they'll, give, they'll give their answer, but they're, they're telling you their answer. They're telling you why you're wrong or whatever. But a few people have some good questions. So I'm just going to... Okay, so first overarching thing we need to talk about is this is absolutely nothing to do with Ivan Jurek. This is... Literally, or Ivan, in, Ivan Jurek, not Ivan. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, because we talked to Ivan about this for a good bit on the podcast. Mm -hmm. If you haven't listened to the podcast, go and check it out. Um, this is something we kind of got into, you know, and it's, I think we even talked about it in this video where we were like, if you want to be really mentally resilient, squatting every day is a really great thing to do, but it's just not the best thing to do. And it's like, Especially when you look at what he's done and the amount of days he squatted in a row, it's like the best case possible for us to look at. Mm -hmm. It's the best backup possible for this video. Um, I think you, like his popularity is like is so deserved. Mm -hmm. I an absolute brain fart oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Like there's nobody deserves to be more popular on YouTube than somebody who's able to squat heavy for that many days in a row. You know, like we're huge fans of him as a body of work this isn't an attack on him in no way no no so uh, ivan obviously ivan jesus christ ivan doesn't own a squad every day squad every day has been around for such yeah. a long time it's been around for years and years from day one since i've been in the gym it's squad every day is a thing and, and most people and let's be honest aside from ivan most people i know who talk about squad every day are shit at squatting they're just not good squatters they're the people who are squatting like 120 130 140 uh that's not a shot at those people it's not a shot at their ignorance or whatever but most people i don't know anyone who's gone to me uh a tree i don't know any 300 kilo squatters and they're gone the best thing I ever did for my squat was squat absolutely every single day that was not one of those who said that to me but that's not a good enough an answer in itself that's an anecdotal thing but it's certainly a clue in the right direction right for for long-term progress for squatting or the best progress but we're, we're, we're We'll stay on topic and we'll stay with the comments right for this for a second. Uh, unless you would something to say. I, I just have a brief thing to say. Yeah. Before, if you want to pick out no, a, yeah, the yeah. next comment. Okay. Uh, when I was thinking about this last night and as we're reading the comments coming in, like there's some great comments there. There's some entertaining comments there. Mm -hmm. But the thing about like your absolute physiological demand of a squat and the kind of adaptation energy that's needed is the main thing you need to think about all the time with programming and programming for kind of like maximal outputs, right? The, the thing I was thinking about last night is like sometimes when you get a, a nut that's on a bolt really, really tight, the right amount of force clamping like a vice grips onto that nut is like, say, 10 newtons of force, right? So I just put my vice grips on. I can then untwist that nut. That amount of force is perfect. If you want to think about squatting frequency in the same way that you can put 10 newtons of force into something, There'll be a certain amount of adaptation energy needed. You'll get that adaptation and then your squat will improve. But you could also put 20 or 30 newtons of force through something. You could really clamp down on that nut. That nut then squeezes around the actual bolt itself. You'll probably end up damaging the nut. You'll probably end up damaging the bolt. And you don't get any kind of positive outcome from using more force. It's not this thing that like the more you can squat, the more frequently you can squat, the more volume you can squat, the better. Realistically, that's not the name of the game at all. What you need to be thinking about is the more volume you can recover from, the more actual positive sessions you have where you can have really good recovery outcomes, 
that's what you need to be thinking about with your squatting volume that's what you need to be thinking about with your programming in general so I'm going to butcher this, but I think mo- the most thing people realize, I think, so like there's a top comment. Someone wrote a very good disclaimer, uh, just another data point. So there's a thing Japanese monks do, it's called uh, Akugaku, I think. Uh, I've heard Ross Edgy talk about it before. Basically, it's a spiritual journey where you put yourself, they run a marathon every day for months on end or something like that. Something crazy up a mountain. Uh, I think most people realize at this stage that Ivan is on his own Akugaku. I think that's the name for it. Nobody correct me, right? Or <laughs> correct me if you want. I don't care. Uh, basically, it's a spiritual journey, and I think most people realize Ivan is is you know he's doing this for his own mm. mental reasons, and it's very impressive, and we all enjoy it. That's why people like it so much because it's very compelling, and we understand the struggle. So Erica Olivier Arias Olivier says a, a very prolific commenter on our channel. Always yeah. appreciate Eric. Great comments, Mirko. Uh, my mother always says there's three things you don't talk about at the dinner table: politics, religion, and what's the most optimal squatting for you to see for gaining strength. So I think that's a pretty good one. That was very funny. Um, waiting a tasteful amount of time after the interview to post this class act. <laughs> not a good nothing to do. I know he's joking. No. I know he's joking. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Adelise X, I've never heard of him, but uh, a couple of people said they enjoy his stuff or something, and they said it's stressful enough to contribute to improve your max effort attempts, heavy lifts, fast sprints, and intense jumps. You probably can't do it every day and survive see results. That's pretty much sums it yeah. up. Yeah. There's some comments in here that are like, you've missed a point, I think, you know. Yeah. Um, no, I'll leave we, that in because people always miss the point. Okay. Yeah. But on those, do we have to read out their name? Uh, or we just read out their name? Well, anyway? like, if you can go find them because I'm going to be putting a comment. Of it. Okay. Uh, Austin says, I-, I believe three times a week for any of the power lifts is optimal or proper management, intensity, and volume. Uh, that's definitely not true in the case of the deadlift 100 percent. or the bench press well, well three times a week works for the bench for some people in certain periods of times you know like you see in the hayden yeah uh it, no three times high frequency benching works very well or pressing i think frequency frequency is one of the main drivers of bench press progression though yeah yeah that's what so you're like something but what like don't you agree with this because i think you could be four days a week po- oh yeah, but, yeah you know? but three is fine yeah, yeah 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 so like if anything you could push the bench press in the opposite direction yeah yeah uh i I would say deadlifting, like a, a heavy enough deadlifting session once every 10 days is enough. I think two squat sessions a week is enough. Mm-hmm. And then I think pre-comp four benching pre- benching sessions a week is like pretty much optimal. So Daniel says, why don't you talk about motor learning patterns and neural efficiency? Uh, so we never said they're not a thing, but you can you can do those with two with low frequency squatting two or three times a week. You don't have to do those every day. Uh, there's an argument to be made that your motor learning patterns would significantly degrade you to uh, fatigue. So some of fatigue is impacts on your CNS. Uh, so like your ability for your CNS to recruit motor units and you don't want to be, so if we're going about the motor learning patterns in particular, we want to always be sequencing the correct motor learning patterns. And in our sports, all of our sports really, we want to be doing those as fast as possible. And speed is a learned trait and it's something you remember and your body remembers. So you always want to be learning motor learning patterns in the most correct way possible. You want to repeat the most correct motor learning, whatever it is you're doing, the motor learning habits. You want to do those correctly as you can possibly do them correctly. So squatting every day absolutely will not allow for the vast majority of people, no matter how many or how little drugs you're, how little drugs you're on, you will not always be hitting the most correct motor learning patterns but doing them every day doesn't increase your ability to learn motor learning patterns essentially the fatigue will catch up and interfere with your ability to learn those neural efficiency is something that takes literally years to get to a proficient level like we're talking 10 plus years so we talked about this a little bit before but there's a couple of a variety of different factors involved in getting actually stronger so there's like um coordination so just like that's kind of like motor learning patterns uh motor unit sequencing so how fast they sequence and how well you're able to do that you've like antagonist coactivation so the opposing muscles uh i was reading something pretty interesting the other day completely unrelated to this but your tibia is heavily involved in sprinting due to inertia coupling coupling so uh mm-hmm. you probably should be training your sprinting so obviously it makes sense when you think about it with your your foot but then you've stuff like uh hypertrophy so you've got a variety of different factors involved in getting stronger uh, there's no reason, there's nothing to suggest that doing squatting every day will result in uh, better motor learning patterns, better neural efficiency, 
In fact, it's very, very likely the opposite from personal experience, anecdotal evidence and people's understanding of fatigue. And there's a lot of new research in the last few years, understanding what actually happens when you're fatigued. These are getting a lot more understood. The biological processes are being understood a lot better. And ultimately, a high frequency. One of the interesting things as well about squatting every day, right? It would force you to do lighter loads for more reps if you're auto-regulating, right? But interestingly, in terms of CNS fatigue, lighter loads for more reps leave more biochemical markers of fatigue. So you're technically yeah. more fatigued. There's a longer term fatigue from um, lower lower weight, but more reps, low load and more reps, uh, if funnily enough. So that would actually interfere negatively with your neural efficiency and almost certainly with your motor learning patterns. Uh, just to talk about something for a second, motor learning patterns. Yeah isn't isn't a thing yeah so a motor pattern uh, is something you learn yeah so like motor learning pattern is if you looked at a cohort of 500 people and and the pattern in which people learn things over the course of their lives or if you were to look at um somebody over the course of a training cycle if if you looked at the pattern of learning that went on like what you're talking about is a motor pattern being learned Mm -hmm. um and then when you look at those and like neurological structures cns structures and and pns structures like your peripheral nervous system and how that adapts to training people tend to think that it's um so people tend to think of it like an artificial learning system or like a machine learning system where the more input you put in the more output you're going to get back or the smarter the system is going to be right as garf just talked about when you're inputting slower data you're inputting slower squats you're inputting less optimal squats that the machine will learn less that's definitely true but in the case of like even if you look at pedagogy as a whole right the the art of teaching or the science of teaching people it's not just about input frequency or it's not just about input volume that's there it's all about whether that input is at the right time whether that input is of the correct kind of stimulus so you might need to learn a certain aspect of your squat. You might need better proprioception in your squat. If you're not training the squat in the correct way, you, you will not gain proprioception no matter how often you train it or how intensely you train it. Um, so just in terms of when you look at, because like motor learning or like in this case, motor pattern learning or motor learning patterns. Um, when you like, this is just something that's thrown out. It's like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it's like people squatting on a bolsu ball and they and they'll throw the word stability at it. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much goes into motor learning, like the that whole area of like neurocognition. Um, yeah, there's a lot to it basically, and and it's not just simply more inputs equals better outputs or more inputs equals more skilled learners. Like mm-hmm. the skill of learning something is is a really um is really diverse yeah it's very nuanced yeah there's there's, um there's a lot of stuff and in 10 years time there'll be so much more information on it absolutely Uh, but a lot of people a lot of good coaches understand the they might not understand so they understand the input and the output scenarios the best ones to facilitate those but a lot of coaches won't understand the middle bit but it's not always necessary to understand that but ultimately understanding the kind of black hole in the middle of motor learning neural efficiency motor unit sequencing cns fatigue stuff like that you can ultimately have better training systems, but the input and outputs really won't change that much ultimately, even when they're better understood. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one actually, because I, I thought about this. So David Murray says, my only criticism is during the interview, you guys didn't address your concerns and criticisms of squad every day with Ivan. Ivan, Yvonne, fuck me, why do I keep saying that? <laughs> uh, I'm not in disagreement with your position, just would have been nice to hear an honest discussion about it. So this is actually something I, I thought about before we went and did the interview, and then I I kind of wanted to say at one point before it, I kind of a sequence of stuff I wanted to talk about. And I wanted to say, you know, obviously, Van, you you know, this is not the best way to squat, I would assume, because he's a very intelligent guy and he thinks about his training a lot. But it didn't need to be talked about. I no. don't. It, it, ultimately, Ivan, Ivan doesn't say that this is the best way to get our squatting. Ivan just, Ivan is just documenting his own training. So it didn't bear talking about. We weren't getting him on to talk about what's the best way to get better squats we wanted to talk to him as a person because he seemed like a very interesting very cool guy uh it was something that everyone wanted to listen to there was a lot more going on there rather than what's the best way to get better squatting so certainly a fair criticism in hindsight 
it did need to be talked about, I don't think. I think the other thing is, so we've been kind of consuming his stuff for a while. Mm-hmm. I, I hadn't actually seen a lot of his stuff, and then I ended up binging it. But the more I watched it, I started to realise that his journey of squatting every day is nothing to do with squatting every day. His whole thing, like, it's not about just getting a bigger squat. His whole thing is just this this kind of introspective journey of training. Like, he talks about training. He's really, really in tune with everything that's going on. Um, so for me, anyway, when I was talking to him, it was very much about, like, teasing out those things of, like, how did he start training? Why did he want to start training? And just hearing more of what he had to say rather than a, a kind of debate style or, like, a round table style discussion of over squat frequency. So James Fazer Fazer Fazalari Fazalari I feel like that's right. Uh James Fazalari Hamas Hamis uh, another frequent commenter always appreciated says all right I get on board of squatting twice a week but what about hypertrophy accessories lunges leg press hack Great squat question. whatever can or should you do additional volume in these so that ultimately plays into what do you need those for what is your purpose for those for what stages of training are you doing those for? What is your sport? Uh, how much of those can you handle? Do you need hypertrophy? Do you need strength training assistance with those? Are you recovering from an injury? Are you trying to prehab from an injury? So all of these come down to pretty individual cases. But more often than not, these will, most sessions will look like something. The main squat accessory or main squat exercise will be first. And then you will titrate in accordingly your accessory exercises based on what you think you need, what you enjoy, what you, what probably needs to be done for your training. Uh, typically, these will look like on the same day more often than not. So whatever your squat day will be, if you're primarily a strength training athlete, it'll be a mostly lower body day for most places. And then you will do your assistance exercise accordingly with that. Yeah, I think, like we talked about, the use of um, like accessory work as kind of like firefighting a lot. So with weightlifters, with powerlifters, with athletes who are on more concurrent style periodized programs, the use of accessory work tends to be in a kind of firefighting or sometimes it's in a kind of proactive role rather than a retroactive role. So you might see athletes who are struggling to, I don't know, struggling to vertically extend at the top of a pull and they're lacking leg strength um, or just quad strength at the top of their pull and you'll proactively put some belt squats in there or you might see an athlete who's struggling to stay with his shoulders in front of the bar as the bar passes his knee, and you might uh, kind of retroactively, having now seen that weakness there, put in some posterior chain work. In those cases, you can tend to like put a small bit more in there. Um, most of the time, if somebody's on a kind of concurrent program, you will see a, a frequency of about two times a week, depending on the, the particular body part or the particular movement pattern that like some movement patterns can take a bit more some movement patterns can't take as much uh, alexandra ho says i have a question dot, 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 dot. when you say squatting two to three times a week is optimal do you mean two to three hard or two to three however of course squatting heavy and to high rp nearly every day or every day will be torture but what about squatting hard two times a week and the other days you more or less just warm up your squat and then stop and so is that basically just a technique day or whatever so someone responded very well to be fair they said you have to uh no hang on what did they say uh no hard days should fuck you up pretty good so you wouldn't be able to do two to three hard days a week in reality so you could put a lot of effort effort and intensity are not the same thing so absolute percentage of one rm is vastly different to how much effort you put in so you could you could have some hard days they would feel like a lot of effort but hard relative to your one rm would be vastly deteriorated from these other hard days in the week but that's not really kind of the point of the question. This is the most common issue here, right? And I see a lot of people have commented this question a few times. So they're saying, why can't I just do two squat days a week or three squat days, whatever, three big ones, you know, three big boys, three main ones, you know? And Hell then, yeah. Then the uh, four to five other days a week, I just come in and do a little bit of squatting. First of all, you're all grown adults and you can do whatever you want. That's the prime thing here. What we're always talking about in relation to squat every day we're always talking about what is the best way to get a bigger 1RM stay injury free and then potentially have it more useful for your sport depending on what it is you need to do so the best way to get better at squatting most often for most people the vast majority of the cases for the most people watching this is about two week, two times a week maybe three times a week depending on who and what you're doing but most time it's two times a week 
so the issue with having these extra light days where you want to come in and squat so this is the biggest problem with squat every day is it's not that people really have good evidence or good fucking yeah people have good evidence good argument how squat every day will be the best way to their squat people just want to train a lot they're addicted to going to the gym and they want to squat more and they're trying to make the outcome fit their argument so they're trying to make their reason for going to the gym fit what they're trying to actually do so realistically when people want to go to the gym and do these kind of technique days or lighter days it's just because you really like squatting but you just have to know that this is not the best way to get better at squatting the problem with these extra technique days right is someone later addressed this comment actually and they said why can't i come in and do so they asked about my imaginary graph uh, it's funny people are critiquing my imaginary graph even though it's imaginary but um they're saying why couldn't i split out the singles across the week so instead of doing like five singles at 85 percent or whatever on one day couldn't i do five singles across the week and ultimately unless you're coming to the gym and you are doing no warm-up sets going straight to that single and dropping off you have a shitload of extra volume from warming up so you have a variety of different if in factors interfering with these other technique days or even if you wanted to split out your volume across the week so you're doing like five singles instead of doing five singles in one day you are doing five singles across the week or actually let's take a better scenario let's say you're doing one set of five one day and you're doing five singles for the rest of the week so the training effect of five one five rm is so vastly different the five singles spread across multiple days it's not really the same thing uh multiple reps per set have different training effects than singles or even singles five singles the same session would be vastly different to one set of five rm okay so that is something you need to realize in the first case so things done within a reasonable time period within like an hour or two of a training session even the same day have different training outcomes different uh, physiological processes on your body uh, different levels of adaption compared to the same level of volume across the week so calendar week isn't something your body really gives a shit about it doesn't care monday to sunday essentially your biochemistry doesn't change on a tuesday compared to a sunday so the period we're breaking down is just god forbid a social construct and is irrelevant to what squatting will have an outcome on your biochemistry realistically so you know it's nice to fit things in the seven days in your head but these are different training sessions and these will have different training outcomes the other problem, so you're not going into the gym and doing 85% with no warm-up. Well, I hope you're not. So ultimately, if you're doing that, you're ultimately... Unless going, you're a fucking legend. Unless you're a legend. <laughs> ultimately, you're going to get injured. But in the other scenario, if you have a load of extra warm-up sets where you have extra volume, extra intensity, where you've nearly quadrupled five times, six times your level of volume in your training sessions, your total tonnage has gone up an awful lot a week. Uh, you also have other interference factors so there's no guarantee that you'll be perfectly recovered for each of those five extra sessions you've other training to do most likely so if you're not just doing squat every day if you're playing sports you're doing weightlifting you're doing powerlifting you've a lot of other extraneous variables that will negatively affect your training and they will not allow you for it to be the most productive so those five singles then will be vastly different and even those five singles then due to the other variables involved in your training so you might be really fatigued one day so it moves really slow we don't really want to be training slow one day something might hurt so you kind of adjust your squat a little bit you kind of lean to one side because your left knee is sore so you lean to your right side so that's another bad single you have a slow single then we're left with three reasonably good singles but ultimately you could have gone for a 5rm recovers gone a little bit more the next week for example uh so there is they are not the same thing so volume matching across the week isn't really a, a thing in most scenarios not in this particular case that we're talking about it's it's a reason people don't really use tonnage as a, a marker of training progression anymore. Uh, I have two things on this. Go for it. The first thing is I'm going to pander to the question a small bit. Yeah. And just dive into that a bit more. And then the second thing is just a bit of realism, right? Yeah. So the first thing, people talk about intensity and in in this sport we're in, like whether it's strength sports, weightlifting, powerlifting, whatever it is, a sport where you're lifting weights, we tend to be far too uh monolithic or we tend to be far too one track minded when we think about intensity because we only think about intensity as the weight we have on the bar right intensity realistically is, is some sort of force marker usually when we look at sport and in the case of weightlifting we need to be looking at the amount of work we do under a certain time so it's not the so or sorry it's the amount of force we exert over a certain time if I was to ask Gurf to do a session where he did uh, 10 sets of two and he did that over the course of 90 minutes, that session will be incredibly 
different if I was asking him to do 10 sets of two over the course of 10 minutes. Now, the stuff of like EMOMs, the stuff of restricted uh, recovery times in between sessions is often thought to be uh, only restricted to athletes who need work capacity on a field or CrossFit athletes who need work capacity within given time domains. In fact, when you look at actual research that's been done on real people in a lab, restricted time domains give us a huge amount more in terms of nuanced training effects. It's not just as simple as five sets of one over the course of a week is the same as five sets of one over the course of a session. Five sets of one over the course of an hour has a different training effect over five sets of one over the course of 10 minutes. So it's not just as simple as you doing 20 sets of working weight squats in a week uh, over in over the course of a week instead of you doing 20 sets of working weight squats over the course of two sessions. The second thing is, and this is a small bit more realism, right? This isn't like we don't answer questions as a thing of like, oh, what do you like to do better on your weekend, right? We don't answer questions as in like, what's your favorite color t-shirt to wear to the gym? It, it's really not a thing of like, or for us, it's not a thing of what do you enjoy doing most? Like we, when we coach athletes, it's not a thing of, oh, I enjoy training 14 times a week. Oh yeah, you're allowed to train 14 times a week. That's not, that's really not what this whole thing is about. This is about telling you what's best to do or what will get you the best results when you're training. It's 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 as simple as that. It's not a thing of like a, a more of an opinion piece or or your personal preferences. What we're really, really focused on is what gets the best results, what research and science has told us will get the best results, and then what personal experience or experience of those close to us will get the best results. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so there's another good one as well, right? Uh, this is tying in from the realism one, which I, I think is a great, it's a great little flow. Larry Boy says, "Are we talking about weightlifting or powerlifting? You know, what weightlifter squats two times a week?" Uh, I don't really know anything about weightlifting. Uh, uh, I'm fairly new to weightlifting, but I know they squat a lot. Uh, there's actually weightlifters who squat twice a day, without including the snatch clean jerk nearly most of the time. So, just a segue in from Fitz's response there, and what'll get you people watching this the best results? So. I know Rip Far Suarez who squats twice a week isn't watching this and thinking, okay, the lads are going to help me get a better squat. I know Miso Asan, I know Luz Arjun aren't watching this. I know um, J- Jimmy Sh- Shenanigan. Larry Boy. Larry Boy. Larry Boy 87, uh, snatching 80 kilos and clean jerking 100 kilos with a 100 kilo squat is watching this. And I know that this is what he most likely and very, very, very confidently say he needs to do to get better. So pointing to, like I said at the start, I don't know any 300 kilo squatters who squat every day and I don't think it's a great argument most of the time. But nobody watching this is trying to squat 300 kilos realistically. Well, you might be trying to squat 300 kilos, but you're not going to probably squat 300 kilos realistically. Um, So saying what elite weightlifters do, is so far from being relevant to what people watching this video do is it might as well not even run on her we might not even talk about it okay now if you do want to if you do want to hear us talk about that in our back squat master class we talked about the difference between squatting for a 1rm and squatting for as a skill to support weightlifting so there seems to be an effect in weightlifting with more frequency squatting for high level advanced weightlifters some with drugs some without drugs they squat frequently to support a kind of neural readiness or a, a consistent neural sacking in their lifting. So it keeps them trained, essentially. It keeps their legs fresh. Again, this is one of those kind of black holes where we're talking about where we don't really know what's going on in terms of like biology, but we know it seems to be consistent among elite weightlifters. Now, not all of them. Uh, no. mo- as many do and just don't squat this frequency. Uh, uh, supposedly, the Chinese team only squatted something around twice a week with the advanced athletes. Gabriel said he squatted about three, t- four times a week. I found about three, four times a week myself the most productive, but even two and three works very, very well. But some of them, like Miso Asano, will squat every day. Red Farsavaris will squat every day. Uh, incidentally, both of those have had knee injuries in the last few months or a year or so. Uh, so they're doing it to support weightlifting. But ultimately, even then, that is still, and they would know that that is not the best possible way to get your squat or run them to the best result it could be. They know if they focus more on bigger two squat sessions, they would end up with a bigger squat at the end of it. They'd know if they approach it for more of a powerlifting 1RM style, 
they know they would end up with a better squat. They're squatting multiple times a week not to get better at, um, you know, squatting one around. They're getting better to use squat as a skill and they're doing it out true frequency. Most weightlifters, we see a lot of weightlifters are very, very slow. We see them with poor technique and poor timing. A lot of times this comes down from being weak, but ironically, they are squatting a lot, but they're very fatigued from the squatting a lot. So that makes them very slow and it negatively affects their lifts. And then they feel like they need to squat more because their squats are low. And then ironically, you keep getting this vicious circle. So most amateur weightlifters are very, very slow and they're weak. And it's from sometimes, a lot of times we see, you know, multiple sessions of squats before the lifts going very, very heavy as frequently as possible. So they're training very, very slow. And they're also negatively affecting their squat because they're doing too much volume and they're under recovered. Sorry. They are over, overtrained. They're training too much, too much fatigue, essentially. Also, I'm going to say this a, a bit tongue in cheek, but if you take the proportion of weightlifters you are watching as what you view as weightlifters to be Olympic level weightlifters now, the proportion of those that are on performance enhancing drugs or are definitely on performance enhancing drugs when they're training to go to the Olympics is further above 90% than you could imagine. And the people you think are clean and are from clean countries are still doing other things that you're not doing. So unless you're in that case where you're a full-time athlete, you're doping, you're taking substances that might not be deemed to be doping, but are definitely doping, or you're actively evading a drugs test, then you probably don't need to pay attention to what those people do in the same way where you're not going to sleep for 10 to 11 hours every night, you're not going to quit your real job and just train two or three times a day, and you're not going to give up everything else in your life, like having a social life, spending time with friends that aren't athletes, um, going out and, and doing things like going on holidays for, for more than a day or two. Uh, you shouldn't really be paying attention to, to the other things they do. Inky, another very consistent commenter, God bless him, uh, says when you mean squat twice a week does that mean also not doing any snatches or clean jerks more than twice a week to give my legs a rest no so snatch clean jerks would be different they're sport specific movements so they are lifts that we just kind of have to tolerate the fatigue from because you want to be better at snatching clean and jerking and then you kind of manipulate for 95 percent of the time your squat around those you, you take the hit to your squat from those rather than not taking the hit from your lifts to the squats. You, you, you want to keep your lifts as a priority for most people. Uh, okay, so here's another one of those of what about isms. So, doesn't Clarence squat five times a week? How does it work for him? Even as a natural, he was squatting 230 HE for reps. Then, if you're Clarence, if you're one in a 10 billion, feel free to go with it, Re. I have no problem. Again, I don't care what people do. I care what my athletes do. I care what people who are on our programs do. But for anyone watching this, if you feel like five times a week and if you don't agree with what Sofri says, I'm more than happy for you to go squat five times a week and prove me wrong and get 230 for multiple reps. This what aboutism, right, yeah. is unique and it comes up about Clarence all the time, right? Because people see Clarence as being the guy who coached himself, did it all on his own, um, was training in a shed. I've met, like, been honoured enough to meet some incredibly talented athletes, some of the athletes you would see as being the best people at lifting weights in the world. Clarence is among the top 2 or 3% of those people. You have no idea how genetically talented, mentally strong, so like in terms of being able to go in and train that so much, that's a, a psychological precursor to success. So using Clarence now, if you are, if you're directly related to Clarence and you have that same kind of structure, you have that makeup and you have that mental tenacity to be able to go and do all that, by all means, watch what he does. But people are, um, people feel like Clarence is really relatable. And I don't know, I don't quite know why that is. I don't know if that's just the other things he's into besides training. I don't know if that's because he didn't have a coach and he didn't seem to be involved in, in kind of national structures. But Clarence isn't like anybody else I've ever met. Okay, so regular Jack, kind of unre not unrelated, but to the topic of program, but more the structure of squatting. Again, I just want to reiterate if you're watching this still. <laughs> I'm going to take that out actually. So um, basically, in our squat, back squat masterclass, we go, Fitz goes over the structures and people's body shapes and bar position to adjust for different uh, high bar and low bar 
in the basketball masterclass to be linked below so go feel free to click on that uh it's nearly two hours of hyper super good content and a load of people have given the great feedback for it we've run over that um ultimately regular jack we might just do a particular video on the high bar bar position we use yeah uh, so basically really 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 condensed down the barbell always needs to be staying over your midfoot if you get the barbell a little bit lower down so basically the widest point to your shoulders so if you go to like your acromion process so it's basically the kind of the bony post to the side of your shoulder it's like the widest bit of your shoulder essentially uh, without being on your rear delts well i suppose it is rear delts but the barbell needs to come down there so if you look at someone like uh actually some of my bar positions are quite there because it's better for most people so when you're doing high bar the barbell should not be above your beyond that kind of process for most people so you shouldn't be someone like gabriel you should be a lot lower down we call it a high bar position or a mid bar position where the barbell will stay over your midfoot due to the nature of you having very very long legs that are not optimal for squatting and the point of changing to front squats right so i am i am that person i could my femurs are longer than my torso so they're actually way above my my collarbones uh i had that thought and i've done this where i I'll focus on front squats an awful lot more because i think they're going to build more leg strength in reality, with the last 14 years of squatting, that hasn't been the case. The loading you get from front squatting just isn't equivalent to the loading you get from back squatting. You can't lift heavy enough. You don't tend to get the same volume and that level of volume over the course of like a prolonged training cycle. Um, and yeah, you just it's just not as, as good or as effective as the back squat in terms of building leg strength and building overall strength. Uh, Keen does gym stuff. Uh, I'm 14, isn't squatting more often or just training more often, close to every day as a teenager, good or better. Uh, I heard that between the age of 13 to 15 or something, training every day or close to every day is a lot more beneficial due to the fact that our muscles recover faster and stuff. Is that true? I'd like to know so that I'm training more efficiently in good portion. Anything I've ever seen from young people training when they like training is they train way too much, train way too hard and don't do the right stuff. So ultimately, Keen, for you, I would err on the side of caution and train less and train with better quality sessions so i certainly wouldn't be training every day and i definitely wouldn't be squatting every day if i was you if you're a weightlifter but even if you're not a weightlifter i do one back squat session a week and potentially one lighter front squat session a week and that's all i would do for you at your age absolutely i would keep it light i would rarely go for one rm singles most of the year i wouldn't even bother i would just be working through a series of uh sets and reps and nicely progressing through those this, I hate to bring it up again, this is something we did get into in one of our case studies recently in that masterclass. The difference between your recovery right now and what's actually an adaption energy is, so you have incredible recovery values as a teenager, right? Especially that 13 to 15 or, or 14 to 16 time gap, depending on, on when you have puberty, you have phenomenal recovery. So all of those hormones that are, are really beneficial to you recovering well, really beneficial to getting stronger, faster, more powerful, being better at learning things. All of those are ramped up through the roof. You're full of piss and vinegar. All of those things are ramped up through the roof. It's incredibly beneficial for you when you're training because you feel like you've instantly recovered. The issue lies in the fact that those hormones aren't ramped up in terms of they're not ramped up for you to perform better at sports. They're not ramped up for you to make direct adaptions to your squat or your deadlift or your bench press or whatever that is. They're ramped up for you to grow and to develop as a human. So although those values are really high right now and you could push your training really, really hard, they're really high for physiological adaptation for you stopping being a youth and you becoming an adult. They're not really high to do both that and make these really large adaptations. So you need to be conscious that although you feel like you could recover from anything and you do, like you feel like you could train twice a day, every single day and push everything to the max, uh, that's not strictly true in terms of the outcome. So although you'll put those, all those things into the black box, the adaptions that happen in the middle, like aren't necessarily going to pop you out as an elite athlete on the other end because so much of that kind of adaption load is being used up in in actually growing up broke fat fishing i disagree i squat slash bench i did it five times a week my lifts are going up just manipulate volume uh what your what your mainer says you're definitely right your anecdotal evidence always years of coaching and lifting it really is that simple that's a phenomenal comment uh so uh look essentially broke someone points it out nice one he's a beginner though so leave him alone basically yeah uh the jack of hearts is that so basically 
the likelihood is you're just an extreme beginner or very very new to it and if you're not then okay more power to you but it's very 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 likely you are and that's probably the reason that is working because you just weights are much much lighter so they're ultimately principles remain the same for most people when you're at any stage you're training but at certain points absolute weight is absolute weight for the human body essentially people drastically different um you know uh fucking name a, a very unmanly man someone graham norton graham norton and um <laughs> tyg furlong are not the same people you know they are vastly different people but ultimately we're still very similar ratios of each other in terms of size so 300 kilos is still very very fucking heavy no matter how strong you are so uh things work well for beginners to a certain point because the weights are a lot lighter and your newer things but ultimately heavy weights are just fucking heavy for everyone after a certain point what i hate with this as well is you'll get somebody like um okay you'll get somebody with a crazy training system that nobody else really uses and they'll push it really hard saying oh it works right uh, the west side method right so you'll say this works really well we've got loads of lifters to lift world records um, and everyone should have conjugate style training or everyone should train all the time because it works for me what you need to start looking at is like it's not just if it works for you but could you have gotten something to work better and for us it's like minimum effective dose what's the most effective thing we can do how much can we push someone to get better and then do we realize their actual potential as an athlete or do you just allow yourself to train every day and get a small bit better? Okay, so uh, Isaac uh, interestingly says, right, so uh, not interesting what he says, but I'm talking about if uh, something you might know about YouTube. Here's some YouTube uh, information. Go on. So YouTube doesn't show you the down votes, right? But if something has even some up votes, it should be higher up. But the down votes lower a comments position in terms of its uh, top comments so if you filter by top comments oh. and if even if something has a lot of upvotes and it's really far down uh, it likely is that you've got a load of down votes so it lowers its position in the comments so i think a lot of people would not particularly agree with isaac says so isaac again what do we say to start not getting it missing the point you know so he says i feel like optimal frequency is different for everyone Plenty of Olympic weightlifters have massive squats with high volume, and there are people that squat every day with good squats, and there are people that squat once a night with four fortnight with crazy squats. It's not a blanket statement and say at least two or three hesitant three times a week, just because that's what the current paperwork says. It's not genuine, gen, disingenuous, don't you think? So, first of all, I don't really think we reference any paperwork in regards to squatting frequency because I don't think there's any out there. Um, again, this is what aboutism of yeah, but there's great weightlifters who do it. Uh, they are less than one percent of the gen the population who squat with a barbell on their back. So, do we do what we know works for ninety nine percent of the population squatting weights, or do we go to hyper elite lifters who are full time athletes on a load of drugs who've been training for twenty odd years, or do we go with do we go with that, or do we go with what we know works for the vast majority of people? Uh, ultimately, people are not snowflakes. People aren't that special. If you're special, you'll know by now because you'll be squatting a lot anyway. You'll already know. You'll know if you're special. It will have happened for you. Um, and it, people who don't think there aren't special people out there. Yeah, yeah. We could walk into this city today yeah. and find somebody who will lift more weights than me or lift more weights than Gareth who has never lifted weights. You would find that person. Well, maybe not me. But... Well, right now, like, you'd get someone to squat 230. No, you wouldn't. You'd definitely get 220, like. But yeah. you would. Like, you'd get... There are freaks that exist out there yeah. who have never trained, who are better than you, who are better than you'll ever be without trying. And you'll know if you're one of them. Ultimately, yeah. you'll know. You won't be asked this question, right? But uh, so to put out a blanket statement is because we wouldn't say that unless we know literally. And I mean, literally thousands of people have done our squat program. They've gotten better from it. Like literally thousands of people which is a lot more than the vast majority of people involved in this conversation. And that's not to say they can't be involved in the conversation, but we just have a lot of good evidence that 2 3 works for most of the people we've coached individually. And the vast majority of people who do it on our program have gotten so much better when they, a lot of people have lowered their frequency and done the squat program and gotten a lot better. Uh, so there's no paperwork there. And then there's kind of Scott says it's an average and any coach of experience will tell you the same. As a coach of myself, I found the same. As being coached myself, it's the same. 
Um, having talked to and worked with multiple Irish coaches, the same. I was baseline. Read Scott's comment. I'm not going to read out to you because we're we're long in the, we're long in the video already. A long um, in the tooth. He basically saying similar thoughts. Of course, outliers exist, and that's why you're training for a focus purpose or sport. You should be coached. Your average gym goer, however, is almost definitely not this person. I didn't even read the rest of Scott's comment, and he yeah. said exactly what we're saying. So then why not start off every question to an answer so Isaac's responding and start with say it depends. Then we'd never make YouTube videos because it all depends on stuff, you know. But it doesn't always depend. It really doesn't always depend. No. Some people are just not genetic talents and that some people is most people. But that's okay. You can still squat big weights. But fuck me. We're just trying to help people. <laughs> we're just trying to tell you through experience and knowledge and experience the better way for you to do this and get better. It's not that we are that we've any particular stake in frequency of squatting. We're just trying to help people get better at squatting because we've done a lot of things wrong ourselves and we've seen a lot of people do wrong things. And we're just trying to help people for free. You know, you don't have to buy our squat program. You don't have to buy our master class. You can just listen to us talk about things and you, your information will be correct. We're not, it's not big squat frequency pharma here. Like, so this kind of thing kind of does bother me because people are coming, like sometimes people come at it as if that, we subscribe to a religion of a certain type of frequency of information or whatever it is. Literally, we're just trying to help people that we know works through experience, personal experience, coaching experience. We've a lot of people who we've helped. We've seen a lot. We've done a lot. We've read a lot. And we're just trying to help people do what it is that we know works best. So it'll save them a lot of time. And ultimately, we will level up all of the information across the strength and conditioning industry. Uh, the more people do things right, the more we'll know what is correct. So to say things are like disingenuous and then you should always answer questions with depends, I think is frankly bullshit. And it really bothers yeah. me when people, uh, if squat every day worked, we would do squat every day. If squat every day was absolutely the best possible way to get a better at squatting, then without a sh shadow of a doubt, no problem saying that that is the best scenario to do it. But it's not. We know it's not. It doesn't work like that. It depends answers. You know, kiss me ass, things like that. Yeah. And the way to help the most amount of people watching this very video right now. If you were to talk about this debate, bring this back to very basics, right? And this is probably what I'll finish on is if you want to give the answer of it depends to everything, right? You can tell your 15 year old that you should deadlift with a straight back, but it depends because some people deadlift with a rounded back and it doesn't hurt them. Or um, you shouldn't drink drive, right? But it depends because some people are grand when they're drunk and they drive. Mm hmm. Or, or you can, uh, you shouldn't do kipping pull-ups if you can't do a few strict pull-ups, but it depends because I did it for years and I'm grand. Like, you have to have a certain level of nuance. And, and myself and Owen are in a somewhat uh, gifted position here, right? We get to sit in an office to read research all day. We get to make videos and talk to athletes all day. We get to program for athletes who are squatting all the time. And we get to acquire all this knowledge and put it on top of and accumulated what nearly 30 years of training mm -hmm. like we get it right we're in this we're in this situation that not everyone else is in and that's why we like to make videos right that's why we put all the videos out for free that's what we want to do we want to give people information but in that case there's no need to put it depends in front of everything uh you shouldn't bend your elbows in the clean you don't have to say it depends because somebody else can do it you don't have to say you shouldn't have a straight back in the deadlift and put it, it depends before it because you might not get injured. Uh, you shouldn't squat every day because it's not the best way of getting strong. Mm -hmm. And let's just leave it at that. Yeah. So thanks for watching this. This grew arms and legs to be fair. But ultimately, if you want more information on the back squat, we have the back squat master class. It's nearly two hours. So we have our lecture part of it. And then we get into some specific contexts with people's Q&As. That's all there in the link below at the University of Sikistan on teachable.com. If you want a squat program to run, a wrote in your back squat program, literally thousands of people to run at this stage. And loads of people have made phenomenal gains in it. It's two times a week. Shocker. It doesn't depend. Uh, so it has all of your squat assistance work on day one. Two squat sessions. It'll fit into anyone's program. Basically, whatever you're doing. All the way from weightlifters to badminton players it will fit in there so that's their seek strength below the link will be below thanks for watching god bless and good night